Nyerik Shirish. Good afternoon, everybody. Kevin Loring, Hans Schwest. Uh, my name is Kevin Loring. I'm Intlikapmakin from uh, Klikomchin, uh, the Intlikapmak nation in what we call British Columbia, Canada. Uh, I'm the artistic director of Indigenous Theatre at the National Arts Centre of Canada and the founding artistic director of Savage Production Society based in uh, British Columbia, BC, uh, Canada. Uh, I'm a playwright, an actor, and a director, a documentary filmmaker, a storyteller. And when I'm visioning the future, when I'm looking at the, the, the coming 2,000 years ahead of us from where we are right now, I have to think about how we are at such a pivotal moment in, uh, in our shared history as Indigenous peoples uh, in relationship to the, the colonial structures in which we find ourselves today. Um, We've come a long way and through many really hard, hard histories as Indigenous people. And we're often told and we often say how resilient we are and how resilient we've had to be. And I think when we look to the future, what we will find is that we will not have to, hopefully, not have to say that so much, that we are resilient, but that we are celebrative, that we are joyous, that we are empowered, powerful people within our own timur, within our own lands, our own sacred places. And when I think of the future, I have to think of right now and where we find ourselves in relationship to the lands that we are on. And I'm honored to be here on these sacred sands of the Emirati and the Bedouin peoples. And I'm very honored to be here um, far away from my homelands the BC and what we call the BC Southern Interior, Fraser Canyon, and where I work and live and raise my family in Ottawa, in the unceded, unsurrendered territories of the Algonquin and Anishinaabeg, where I'm very honored to, to make my living. And as Indigenous peoples, we are always describing ourselves. And in fact, a lot of, you know, we say we are the people of the, of the river, people of the sun people of, of this valley, we are always in relationship to the land. So much so that we, like, we are a part of it. The land has shaped our DNA. The land has shaped our culture, our languages come from the land. Our spirituality comes from the land. Our medicines come from the land. We relate ourselves to the animals that live there, to the waters that are there, to the earth, the skies that we see the stars, and that is our strength. Our relationship to the land is our strength. It's where our stories come from. In my territory, we have all kinds of stories that are triggered by coming upon certain landmarks within the Fraser Canyon, for example. We have these things called transformer rocks, and each transformer rock triggers a story. It talks about the creation of the lands that we find ourselves in as Tlacabmuk people. Our language is shaped by the landscape. My language uh, falls within the Salishan language group. Intlakapmuk's chin, the tongue of the Intlakapmuk. And in that, our neighbors to the south of us on the coast are also a Salish people, but they have a very different culture than us. Our culture is much more, well, we live in a riparian zone geographically. And that, what that means is we live in an area as Intlakapmuk people where many ecosystems join up. So we have a coastal mountain range on the one side of the river. We have the beginning of a desert belt on the other. To the south, we have, I mean, the mountains, we have alpine valleys. We have big lakes and big, long, sweeping, savanna-like territory grasslands. And so our culture, we have both potlatch culture in my territory and plains-like culture in my territory. We traveled very far back in the day, before we were stuck on our reserves. We used to travel down into the states where the buffalo are, and we would hunt and trade with our relatives down there. In the grave sites in my territory, there are buffalo robes, but there are no buffalo in my territory because we traded and we traveled. We're not static. And we moved uh, with the times. We adjusted with the times. As indigenous people, we are incredibly not just resilient because of the hardships that we faced, but we're also innovative because of the way in which we take technologies that come to us 
and transform them for our own use in our own way. And this is the same with art. We also do this with the mediums that we find ourselves surrounded by, with social media, with video games, with theater, with dance, with plays, documentary. All of these spheres, we have our own way of doing, our own way of engaging, our own way of saying who we are and telling our stories. For so long, people were telling our stories for us, telling us that there weren't enough of us who knew how to do this. There weren't enough of us around to, to even portray us on stage. So they'd hire a whole bunch of Italians because, you know, Italians just like natives, right? Um, and so we've evolved, I think, culturally to a point uh, away from that, like in a larger culture, to where we have more representation. It can still be better. And there are still people out there who want to take on our identities and tell our stories for us on our behalf. And we're working ourselves away from that as well. Because we have to, in order to move forward in a good way, be able to express ourselves in the way that we see ourselves. And we do that by owning it. We do that by doing nothing without us. If, you, if you're going to tell our story, you have to do it with us. You have to engage us to do that. You have to support us. And I mean that in the sort of like to the institutions that are the gatekeepers. And when I look to the future, 2,000 years in the future, I look at what the National Arts Center has begun with the creation of the Indigenous Theater Department there that I run. That is just the beginning of a transformational step, in my mind, where we are not just incorporated or included in an institution, but we are the creators of our own body. We are the builders of our own spaces that reflect our values, that reflect our needs and our responsibilities to our communities. Because that is, I think, that one of the differences of Indigenous artists. We don't get the luxury of just being in a, you know, being a one, one body and amongst a massive population. We have the responsibility of always being responsible to the communities we come from. As an Intlikadmuk man, I cannot stand before you and speak on behalf of a nation that I am not from. I can't, I can't speak from that positionality unless I have that permission. I have to find a way to, to, to get that permission, either through uh, the authority of uh, artistic leadership or community endorsement. There's the protocols that we have to follow as artists that are, I think other, other peoples don't really have the responsibility as much. And so as we look to the future, we need to build our spaces with those kinds of thinking, thinkings in mind. And the needs of our community are different as Indigenous people. So as, a, as the artistic leader at a national institution that is mandated to tell Indigenous stories, it's difficult sometimes to negotiate the institution and the indigenous needs. And so when I look to the future, I see a constellation of indigenous art spaces across our Timihu, our territories. I see artists who are trained by artists who are indigenous and not having to be downloaded Shakespeare into their brains in an ancient English dialect that no longer is relevant to our stories, to our spectacular, our creation stories, our understanding of our relationship to the universe. Those are the things that need to be embodied for us to really move forward in a good and strong way. And when I look to the future, I cannot look at it without realizing where we are today in terms of our relationship as all of humanity, with our tbil, with our sacred lands, because our sacred lands are hurting. I stand before you, my Sheikh, my friends and family, somebody carrying a heavy heart. My entire nation, as I stand before you today, are climate refugees. And I live in a landlocked territory in British Columbia, Canada, I live in South Central British Columbia, which is a vast territory. My, my, the Intlikamuk territory is, the size, is greater than, than 
many European countries and extends down below the 49th parallel. And today, all of my people, including my mother, are refugees in our own territories. Not because of the residential school system that we are also getting over and dealing with in that pain, but because of the climate crisis that we are all in. This summer, my village, which is the center post of Inkakapma territory, is the center of our territory, reached temperatures in excess of 50 degrees. The official number that they'll tell you is 49.6 degrees Celsius for three days straight, north of the 49th parallel. That temperature has not been reached in thousands of years in North America. And for one week, my village exceeded that. Anecdotally, people were saying it was 53, 54 degrees in my territory. 